Tech fans, all right, we are back. Sorry for the delay. For the last few days, we've been doing all of our Ryzen 3 testing so we can bring that stuff to you to the table. And I think at the end of the day, you guys are gonna be very surprised with the numbers. For the last pretty much forever, Intel has always been a little bit more expensive, but yet a little bit more powerful than AMD. But you guys are gonna see with the brand new Ryzen 3 chips that have come out, that AMD has honestly finally leveled the playing field at the same price point. Now I did something different. I actually made everything that we tested for almost dollar to dollar exact price. The motherboards, there was only a few dollars difference between them. I think the AMD board was about $10 more, but everything else that we did in the system is exactly the same. We use the same memory. We use the same power supply. The only thing different on the boards is the boards themselves and the CPUs that are on them. And the way that I do this and the reason that I do this is I feel that if you walk into a Best Buy or you walk inside of a store, you usually have a budget. You have five or six hundred dollars you walk in the store that's what you've got to spend you don't have any more so i feel dollar to dollar pricing versus performance is the absolute best way to do testing like usual i want to hear you guys' thoughts but i honestly feel this is the absolute best and most fairest way that you can do the testing so we went that way and i really think that you guys will be very surprised at the end of the video on how things went i know that i was because like i said traditionally intel at price per price usually always beats amd but check it out things have changed. Now, for my test systems, I use two different motherboards. For our Intel test system, we used an i3-7100 and a Gigabyte H110M motherboard. And on the AMD side of things, for the CPU, we used the 1300X, and for the motherboard, we used an MSI B350M. Both these motherboards have very similar features across the board. The AMD board was, however, $10 more. One thing to take note of, however, is that 1300X comes with a Wraith cooler, and this is much better than the standard cooler that comes on any Intel CPU. For the memory, on both boards, we used eight gigabytes of Kingston's HyperX DDR4, and for the power supply, we used two EVGA 500 watt power supply. So everything on these test systems is the same, except for the motherboard and the CPUs. And the video card that we used for all of our testing was an RX 560 from ASUS. Like I said earlier, everything on these systems is identical except for the CPU and the motherboard itself, and the prices were equal all the way across the board. The CPUs were pretty much the exact same price. We use the same memory for it's the same price. So the only difference you're really gonna see are the prices of the motherboards. Like I said, the one that's on the AMD side was $10 more, which is really no big deal. With that said though, let's jump in, let's check out the benchmarks, and then talk at the end of the day why AMD has finally leveled the playing field. Let's rock. As far as temperatures go, you guys will see that the AMD Ryzen 3 is running a little bit hotter, but that's due to its four cores and its higher 65 watt TDP. All right, folks, so there you have it. And you guys can see that the scores are pretty much equal all the way across the board. Now, in some instances, the AMD CPU actually did a better when it did multi-core testing, but on single core testing, the Intel i3 still did win, and there were a few places where the Intel i3 won. But overall, everything was pretty much equal in a trade-up. So I really feel at the end of the day that AMD, at the same price point as Intel, is now bringing the same performance. And that's really the first time I've ever seen this in the history of doing testing. It's always been Intel more expensive, Intel always a little faster. But now, in my dollar-for-dollar -dollar testing, 
racing, you guys can see that AMD has completely leveled that freaking playing field and made it so they're equally as well. Now, there are a couple things I do want to talk about. We did have a little bit more difficulty getting the AMD system up and running. We just had some driver issues and I don't know exactly what was going on there. And it did seem that when we were just doing standard interface stuff, you know, just sitting and working in front of your computer, that the AMD did seem just a little bit more sluggish than the Intel. That could have been, you know, due to some of the drivers we were having. But at the end of the day, I have to say, if you're going out and you've only got five or $600 and you want to get yourself a pretty good system, you have now a choice between AMD or Intel and the performance is pretty much great across the board. Now, I will say this, since AMD has a quad core processor versus a dual core processor, I think for like future proofing, that the R3 is actually a much better investment than the i3. That's just my take on it. I hope you guys agree, but like I said, man, it's been a long time coming, but it seems like with AMD's Ryzen R3, the playing field has been leveled and dollar for dollar, you're getting the same performance with AMD as you do with Intel. I'm Melrick, you guys have been watching Tech of Tomorrow. Like usual, every part that we use and links to them will be down below the like button. So if you like what you saw, hey, you know what to do. And if you're not subscribed, we'd love to see you back here.